We'll get right into these matches, but real quick, for those of you who are new to the channel, I'm a former wrestler, and this is my third competition as a blue belt. I've made it a goal to win a tournament at every belt in both gi and no gi, and I won a few local tournaments as a white belt, but I've still never won a competition as a blue belt. And today, not only do we have the opportunity to win a competition at blue belt, but since Jiu Jitsu World League combines blue and purple for their intermediate division, we also have a chance to check the no gi box at purple belt as well. Our first opponent is from 10th Planet, and straight away I'm able to pass his guard using the threat of the guillotine. Eventually he's able to regain half guard here by using his hand to throw it over to his foot but I maintain top control and I'm gonna cross face him here to keep him on his back. He has a lockdown here so I need to bring my heel to my butt to free that leg and eventually I'm gonna be able to do so and we go out of bounds. Again, I'm able to pass the guard just using that half Nelson grip while also putting my left hand on the mat to block his hips. Uh, so that's three more points for the guard pass and I put an additional two points on the board by going knee on belly. And I'm just trying to stay on top here, trying to expend less energy than my opponent is. I keep the knee on belly and slowly transition into mount. The ref counts and I get another four points on the board. Now with limited time left, I could just lay here and accept the victory. Uh, but you know, these competitions are just about getting better, these local tournaments, so I go for a really sloppy mounted triangle and knee him in the head. Uh, so, first match, win, but that is the last match of the day that will be decided by points. Now straight into the semi-final match, and I can tell right away that my opponent's also a wrestler. You can tell just, you know, he has a good stance, and you can tell that he's comfortable in this position. And we're just fighting for inside position, doing what we can to prevent the other person from controlling our head. And here I'm gonna look for a slide by to outside foot sweep and it off balances him, but not enough to take him all the way to the mat. And looking back, I really should have doubled down on that underhook and try to run him over and use that to pass. He goes for an arm bar from the collar tie. And here I'm gonna go for a double leg, which is my best takedown, but he is an underhook and he stuffs it. For any successful takedown, you need some sort of setup beforehand. So if you go for a shot and your opponent immediately has an underhook, that probably means you didn't set it up very well. And just as I say that, he's gonna go for a blast double at my chest here, and I defend it with an underhook. I go for a double leg here, a similar story, he just blocks it with that collar tie. And after some more hand fighting, I go for another double leg that would have been a lot more effective if I just stuck to the right side and tried to get the single leg there. I don't know what it was this day, I just didn't have that spring in my shot that I normally have. Uh, and again, I shoot for a double leg, I'm unable to drive through. That spring in my shot that I normally have. With 30 seconds left, we're, we're hand fighting really hard, but not much else happens. And for the first time in my grappling career, the match will be decided by referee's decision. You never want to leave the outcome of a match in the hands of the referee, but I felt like I was the aggressor in that match, and the referee agrees, and he gives me the win to move on to the finals. And in the finals, we're facing a college wrestler, and these next five minutes will decide if I finally win my first ever intermediate competition. But first, a quick reminder to like and subscribe. I post videos every week and I'm trying to hit 10K subs by the end of the year. Also, if you're looking for new Nogi gear, Heavy Handed Combat makes some of the comfiest rash guards I've ever worn. They're not too thick and they don't hug your armpits too tight like a lot of rash guards do. Personally, I really like their matted, kind of muted colorways. If you use code Ryan at checkout, you can save 20% off, link in the description. Now back to the hardest snapdown of my life, I use a sucker drag to get out of this front headlock and shoot a high crotch as we go out of bounds. I off balance him here with a shot fake and he's gonna respond with an ankle pick. But I'm able to keep my head away from my knee and avoid the takedown. Here I'm gonna post with my left hand to set up a simple snatch single. I'm keeping my head up in his chest to avoid the guillotine, but when I shelf the ankle, he's able to limp his leg free because we're not wearing shoes. I go for the same shot again and he's gonna follow up with a double leg of his own but I'm able to whizzer and we reset again. So at this point, I know I need to change my attacks. So here I look for a super duck and get absolutely stuffed. He's gonna snap me down again. And again, he shoots another double leg. This time I'm able to get him in a front headlock and I use that to transition to the single. Uh, but he's got a good sprawl and he puts me in a front headlock. I, I'm in a tripod here and again, I'm able to escape using a sucker drag. So there's only about a minute left, and after some more hand fighting, my opponent, the college wrestler, does the unthinkable and pulls guard. So now I'm working into my passing. I'm gonna move side to side here, 
and use that same pass as before where I just hunt for the leg. We land in kind of a half guard. I'm in a good position to pass here, but he's controlling my left arm really well, which is preventing me from getting the cross face and keeping his back flat. So I just decide to disengage. I nearly get past his guard again, but he's able to get underneath me and enter into a leg entanglement. I use my right foot here to slip the knee line, and as soon as I do, the ref stops the fight. Everyone here is a bit confused, but Jiu Jitsu World League doesn't allow knee reaping until the brown and black belt level, so my opponent gets disqualified. And I let the audio from my coach do the rest of the talking. So nobody's happy with that ending. It was clearly a knee reap and the referee is just doing his job, but it's a little bittersweet because I did not want to win my first intermediate competition like that. I trained leg locks, clearly so does this guy. I knew how to escape the position. He knew how to enter into the position. It's just a little frustrating, but I still get to technically check these two boxes. Uh, again, not really how I wanted that to go, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.